My name is Chancellor Chabaya. I'm from Zimbabwe. Uh, perhaps before, before I start my presentation, I just want to find out how many people here know how to dance. <laughs> okay. And and how many people wish they knew how to dance? So we'd like to learn how to dance. Okay. And this is a starting point. Um, I work with a company called African Dance and Wellness. This company was started in, in October 2015, uh, and it was with three divisions: it's Africa, which does dance fitness training, uh, there's Tamba Africa Ensemble, which does performances, and there's Afrofit, which teaches African dancers. So my presentation is going to be about Afrofit. Now, the team for Afrofit um, is with myself. Um, I'm through finance, and I've been doing that for about nine years now. I've worked the project director called Wesley, who is a cultural expert, a social entrepreneur, and has six years of experience. Then I've got a physiotherapist called Anne. Uh, she's with five years of experience, and uh, she's also a physiotherapist for the national rugby team for Zimbabwe. Um, we've got Tendai, who is our marketing guy, uh, who's also a blogger, who's with two years of experience. And then we've got four instructors and trainers who are working in our team. So, what is the problem? Um, no life expectancy. In Zimbabwe, the life expectancy is 58 years, which means that an average person is likely to die before they retire. And then in the United States, it's slightly higher, which is 79 years. And then we've got um, an increase in non communicable diseases, for example, obesity. Um, these are diseases that come as a result of um, your lifestyle. So they are not contractable, you cannot uh, get them from. So basically, your way of life will determine what you can suffer from. And obesity is one such disease. And a third of adults in the United States suffer from obesity. Um, then there's social exclusion. I think if you uh, say if you're from obese, uh, there are certain uh, social settings that you can be part of. Uh, and as a result, you miss out on, on certain activities. So social exclusion tends to be an issue um, as a result of that. And then with a huge span of healthcare, this tends to be a national problem for most countries and even for individuals as well. You fall sick, you're bound to, to spend money on your healthcare. And then there's low productivity and inefficiencies in workplaces. Um, I think for those who run companies, people would want to have the employees as efficient as they can be. So if you are not healthy and if you are not fit, chances are you report off, off work for five days in a month. And that's money that's a loss for a company. So the companies are reporting losses as a result of low, low, and, uh, low productivity and inefficiencies. And then um, going to the cultural side, I think Africa is a very cultural continent and people always want to have a connection with their culture and also with their dance and their values. So, what is the solution? The solution is Afrofit. Afrofit is an African dance fitness um, workout program. So what we've done is we've taken African dances and we've created workouts um, that are effective and it's a, such, a, such a unique way of working out and it's fun as well. So we, we call it this the innovation which hasn't been done anywhere. Uh, in Africa. It's fun and it's engaging. I think a lot of people also want to, want, want to dance, but uh, they want to do it either uh, in a bar or in a social setting. But you can also use dance to stay fit. Um, we use unique uh, cultural Pan-African dance styles. If you are from Africa, you may know how to dance to as well, for instance, or you can dance to greater all those um, uh, African dances. So this is something which is also unique that we are trying to implement. So how do we do this? Um, with weekly Afrobeat classes. So if you can't remember, you can subscribe and you can take part in our classes. Um, every month we go on a hike. We select a particular location in Nairobi, for instance, where we invite people to come and take part in our hikes, which has also become a place where people gather. It has become a social gathering. People get to network, and at the end of the hike, we do an Afrobeat workout. Um, we've got health assessments. Um, they stand as a physiotherapist, so she also assists in the health assessments. So if you've got high blood pressure or you've got a heart problem, um, we've got uh, experts who actually assist us in terms of uh, testing our clients. And then just recently we've started corporate, so corporate wellness programs where we're now going to companies and um, interact with their employees. We're now trying to ensure that employees uh, are more productive Therefore, we take our programs into the workplace, have uh, our programs be part of the weekly schedule, uh, or monthly schedule in terms of the workplace, and then 
uh, companies become more efficient and more effective that way. Um, and then part of that also includes team building exercises. You can have companies that have got um, very rigid departmental structures. So if you're in finance, for instance, you don't mix a name with guys that are in sales or in operations. So if you take part in half of it, or you take part in like team building exercises, we're helping to bridge those gaps that exist within the company. So the courage market landscape. People who exercise, they do personal exercise, um, they can do personal training, they can go to the gym, they Zumba, then there's AfroFit. AfroFit is way up uh, in that market scale. So what we're doing is unique in the sense that when people want to work out, they want it to be effective. In other words, they want to see results when they work out. But at the same time, it should be fun. So there's a social engagement and fun aspect to working out and to exercise. In the competitive comparison, uh, I think we're trying to um, have a look at all these options and see where uh, each option fits into the fun, engaging, the intensity and the effectiveness. And after that, uh, it's proven to be high in all these areas. And the study that we've done so far is if you take part in a 45 minute workout for after fit, you can gain up to, up to 600 calories of energy within 45 minutes, which is highly effective. So, who are our target customers? Um, the first one is the individuals. I think we've got people who've got an interest in terms of um, being fit and staying healthy. We've got uh, nursing and old age homes who are people who are now retired and old age, but they also want to stay fit. We've got schools, where we've got a large group of school children who also have an interest in sports, and as a result, they should stay fit. And then we've got corporate institutions who currently are our target, uh, this is our target market simply because this is a, this is a high paying um, market. So we can go to individuals, but an individual will pay us $20 in a month. So as much as every company that can pay us um, uh, sums of money. So what is the AfroFit experience like? Um, here we've got a, one of our instructors in class, uh, the student. Um, this is the scenario in our dance studio. And then we've got one of our instructors in a workplace. We've got a scenario whereby if you've got a good enough number of people, we can have our instructors come to your workplace. Um, here, this is a corporate wellness program uh, for a company called Minerva in Zimbabwe. This is also one of our clients. Um, this is a school, um, and you can see this, this children are having fun um, during that of your workout. And then, also part of our school programs, we also uh, cater for people that are uh, in wheelchairs and paraplegics. So we're trying to bridge into all social divides in terms of delivering our service. Um, this is an old age home called Bandara and Broad in Zimbabwe. So we're also trying to ensure that even the old age also get a feel of, of our projects. So what are the testimonials that have come from our clients who have used our services? We've got a, one of our clients called Kareem here actually saying, Monday you don't have to be a drag, just dance. This is after an African workout. And then this was after an African hike. She's saying memories of a weekend all spent keeping fit after fit. I think the good thing about these hikes is they also promote tourism within Zimbabwe. So apart from coming to meet new people, apart from coming to exercise, you also get to enjoy the beauty of nature. Um, this is uh, also uh, something today with Afro Dance and Wellness uh, family after fit hike in Zimbabwe. This is one of the mountains that is Zimbabwe from the Korea. And then um, yeah, that's, that's me there. That's my operation as director and part of the team, uh, um, our clients. So, then this, uh, this interesting tweet um, from the lady who said, the Arabic hike has really challenged me. It was fun first time, uh, it was a fun first time experience, and I would totally be going there every night. So we see a lot of positive response from our clients, and now we intend to um, continue doing what we're doing. So, what is our budget market strategy? Um, in this case, uh, we start, like I said, we really started in October 2015. So we're now trying to uh, get traction into more companies and more schools. Our target market, um, I'll tell you, look at other companies. And then we're going to direct marketing, demonstrating to schools, and then also into high traffic areas to attract uh, individuals. And then we also intend to uh, get new schools, provide services uh, provide to five companies. And what is interesting is we've been getting of inquiries from medical aid societies who are directing their clients to us because they want their medical aid claims to go, to go lower. So 
to the note that if their clients come to us, it means they'll be fit, therefore they won't have as high claims coming from individuals. So there's a huge market that is coming from there. And then there's the National Fitness Wellness Program that is introduced in Zimbabwe. If this comes through, what it means is we have access to a lot of uh, schools and institutions, which will also be a good uh, type of money for us. And then currently we're in Zimbabwe, and then we tend to grow our products into the way in other cities as well. So that's our go-to market strategy. And then our market can divide into individual clients as well as institutions which are corporations, corporations schools, and nursing homes. For individuals, there's more, there's more of referrals, posters, social media, radio, activations, and uh, the classes there, they are more focused in a dance studio, which you have to pay for. But if you go to a client, it means where you are going to their premises, and uh, the, the relationship there is more, it's more professional. Therefore, we're looking at partnership, sponsorship, and referrals as well. Um, our financial focus, this is particularly depending on the fact that we, uh, the National Fitness Program come, uh, comes through and we also get to have a lot of new schools and companies coming on board. So I'm looking at having a net exit of 34,000 uh, in the first year, 35,000 in the second year, and 37,000 in the third year, if you follow through our growth strategy. And then our milestones, we did a market analysis in June 2015 to September before we launched in October 2015. And then we opened our first studio in November 2015. And since then, we've signed two, two, uh, two schools and we had two great clients coming through on board. And then, so now, where we are, we're on the growth phase. We want to um, improve our business and uh, reach new markets or increase our presence in the markets where we exist. Now, our investment highlights um, we're looking at hiring new employees, um, getting studio space uh, for rentals to purchase new sound equipment, blood pressure machines, health assessment test kits, and marketing. What this means is, for our expansion, we need a capital spend of about $50,000, which we need to spend on all those actions that are listed there. We're also looking at strategic partnerships. I think it's not only about a person giving money, but if they come with uh, uh, potential expertise that will allow us to either enter new markets, we would really appreciate that. And then, we're still running into a loss. Um, but we tend to break even by December 2016. So we're still putting money into the business. And then um, if you follow through the expected uh, expansion plan, we, we hope that by July 2017, we have gone through our first phase of expansion. So this is the team again that is um, responsible for have, uh, making all that happen. And uh, like I say, our tech life statement is adding life to your years and years to your life. So just trying to uh, in, encourage an active lifestyle among the citizens of Zimbabwe. So thank you very much. That is African Design Awards. Um, Stan, do you franchise this Afro fitness and do you have CDs as well? Because there's the opportunity um, in my country there are lots of Zumba Center or it's a growing number. Can can this be worth it, it can. Uh, we are exploring the possibility of selling our material online. So if you buy it online, you don't have to buy it. CDs, we, we didn't, uh, we've thought about it. DVDs, yeah. We, we have thought about it, but haven't gone uh, on to, to produce it, simply because now we are trying to, first and foremost, come up with the material, which we can then, which we can then publish. So it's something that we have in mind, and I'm pretty sure once we, once we have the material that we can put in a public forum, we can then uh, we can then take that up.